Hi, and welcome to another episode of Pet Pals. I'm Bethany Davidson, the Humane Educator here at Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. Um, and as always, uh, animal wrangling for us is uh, our dedicated volunteer, Tammy Benson. Our first guest today is Tilly. And um, spring usually means kitten season, um, but for a number of reasons, we don't have as many kittens available right now on the adoption floor. We do have a variety of kittens in foster care, still waiting to uh, meet that magical age where they can come back and be adopted. But, you know, people taking better care of their animals, making sure they're spaying and neutering, all of these things have, have led to a decrease in our, our uh, kitten population. So when people come in, they're, you know, if they're looking for a kitten, they're automatically drawn to the youngest one they see on the adoption floor. And right now, the youngest cat available is Tilly. She is a um, four month old black domestic short hair. And I wanted to put her on the show today, not um, because I think she's gonna have a hard time getting adopted, but because, um, she, people are gonna to wanna to adopt her just because she is the youngest. And uh, she's not gonna be a great fit for everyone. Tilly is one of our Frady cats. She is very, very shy. Um, you have to be very patient with her. She's not necessarily gonna be a great cat to add to a home where there are a lot of small children and things like that. So you wanna make sure that you're taking that into consideration and that you can provide her with that safe uh, loving, patient environment so that she can learn to trust people and feel comfortable in the world. Um, right now, she likes to hide in her cardboard box and that makes her feel safe. She's okay being held as long as you wrap her really tightly, swaddle her nice and tight so she feels secure. Um, and that's something that you're going to have to work on. It's not going to be you take Tilly home and instantly she's this fun, loving kitten that runs around and plays and cuddles with you all night long. Um, you have to put a little bit more work in it and uh, really be committed to her. So you wanna think that through when you're visiting with Tilly and making sure that you are the best fit for her and that you're not just um, in love because she's the smallest kitten on the adoption floor. If you wanna visit with Tilly, you can see her at 1832 Rosemont Avenue. Our next guest um, might be what uh, Tilly will look like when she's grown a few years. This is Scooty, and she is a seven-year-old uh, black domestic short hair. Um, she came to us um, mid to uh, late March, and she was an, an animal that was adopted from us back in fiscal year 2012. Uh, 2012. And uh, she was brought in because her owner said that um, she has behavioral issues that she had been having litter box issues that they've been trying to correct for four years. Um, unfortunately, they tried a lot of different things, but it doesn't seem that they took her to the vet. <laughs> um, uh, is you know they didn't write down here that they were taking her to the vet to to figure it out because once she arrived here we discovered that uh, she had what is called uh, urine crystals commonly um, those crystals build up and it can be painful to go to the bathroom um, so now that we have uh, diagnosed her we have put her on a correct prescription diet to um, eliminate those crystals for her um, so that she can um, you know feel you know, better. Um, she is going to need to be on that food for the rest of her life. Um, right now she's eating um, the Royal Canin SO, um, canned and dry. And uh, we've had many cats that come through with these types of issues where people are saying, hey, they don't use the litter box. When we run the tests, we find out that they are sick and we quickly resolve those issues. And as long as people are following, you know, the prescribed um, medical treatment, they shouldn't have any issues moving forward. Um, other things to know about uh, Scooty is that she can be a little shy. She is a lap cat, but she is a little nervous, afraid of loud noises. Um, she likes to have her ears scratched. She likes soft blankets to knead on. She likes to be held like a baby. She loves to play with strings and hair ties. Um, so she is uh, just your typical cat. Um, she is, like many uh, older cats, one that maybe has a little bit of a shorter fuse. So if you have very young children, Scooty might not be uh, the best pet for you, but uh, she's gonna do well with uh, a cat savvy family. If you're interested in Scooty, um, because she is a senior, you could adopt her from us for a $20 reduction in your adoption fee, making her uh, adoptable for a fee of just $77.50. Our next guest is PJ, and uh, he came to us as a stray, so we are still learning about uh, PJ and the things that he likes and dislikes. So he's approximately two years old. 
Um, he definitely has those big Tomcat cheeks. He's very kind of muscly. Um, he has not yet been neutered. All of the animals that come to our shelter, before they leave, they are gonna be altered um, before they go. So um, that's gonna be for cats, dogs, and rabbits. Also um, things like goats and pot-bellied pigs. Um, they are also um, castrated before they leave. So we wanna uh, make sure that we're taking care of that. In addition to uh, making sure that you're getting an altered animal, we are also gonna give them all of their basic veterinary care while they're here. So um, for about the ninety-seven fifty, uh, just under $100, you're gonna get a cat that's been altered, that has been um, rabies vaccinated, given its distemper vaccine, um, been dewormed, given flea and tick preventative. Um, and since he is a, a cat that has come to us as a stray, you're also gonna get a microchipped cat so that if um, he were to get lost again, um, we're gonna be able to get him home um, to his proper family much quicker. Um, as you can see, um, Scooty, or excuse me, PJ um, is settling in um, quite nicely on Tammy's lap. Um, he's showing her kind of what he likes. He's not uh, gonna. He's not the type of cat that's gonna sit still. He likes to roll around on your lap a little bit. Um, one of the things that we have learned um, is that I've experienced personally. First and foremost, he does not like to go in his cat carrier, um, but also. Um, the staff have written on his cage card that he uh, does startle easily, so it's going to be important to go slow with him. Again, as we've talked about with uh, Tilly, you know, maybe not a home with lots of young kids who are maybe going to do lots of loud noises, run up on him, lots of fast motions, um, just to give him a chance to, to acclimate a little bit to um, being in a home environment. So if you are interested, in uh, making PJ here part of your family. You can visit with him here at uh, Frederick County Animal Control. We are open to the public six days a week, Monday through Saturday. She's breaking up our uh, black cat show today. Um, she is a Torby with white. She's about five to six years old. And uh, she came to us um, previously owned. Her owner said that she kept uh, running like she was outdoor indoor outdoor and she wouldn't stay on their property and um, their neighbors apparently were being difficult about that so it is important it is the law here in frederick county that your animals have to stay on your property um, or otherwise they're, they're running at large so um, it's your job and your responsibility to maintain your pets for cats it is going to be um, much safer for them to stay indoor they're going to be at a uh, reduced risk of, of, you know, being hurt by other animals, of being hit by cars, of being stolen from your property, of getting various diseases. So um, the safest thing for your cats is to keep them indoor, but it is also your responsibility if you're letting them outside to maintain them on your property and to make sure that they have the necessary vaccines to keep them safe and healthy. Um, you should definitely be supervising them, maybe even harness training them. So there's a lot of things that you can do if you wanna give them some outside time. One of the things that happened to Zoe as a result of her being uh, an outdoor cat is that um, when she came to us, um, she had wounds of unknown origin that were likely from an animal on her. And that means that um, we have to quarantine her for a period of time to make sure that she is not an animal that has been exposed to rabies. Um, so um, when an animal has not previously been rabies vaccinated or we have an unknown history with rabies vaccines, that quarantine period is four months. Um, but because Zoe um, had previously been adopted from us, um, we knew that she had had rabies vaccines in her past, so she only required uh, a 45 day quarantine. So that's something that's, um, you know, a drastic difference between four months and 45 days. So it's really important to keep your pets vaccinated um, and to keep them um, to keep those records because in, in Zoe's situation, it made it so that she was able to have the opportunity to be adopted much quicker, but it's also gonna prevent her from getting sick. Um, you know, you don't know if your cat is gonna get out, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know if a bat's gonna come into your house. So even if you have an indoor only pet, it's, in, it's vitally important to make sure you're getting your animals rabies vaccinated um, so that uh, they can be, uh, you know, placed in forever homes, much like uh, Zoe now has the opportunity to, to do. Um, she is looking for a home that definitely um, adult only, or um, at the very least older children, um, because she, like many, many Torbies, is a little sassy. You can visit her here at Animal Control.
Our last cat for this episode is Shamu. Um, he is named Shamu for obvious reasons. He's black and white. When he originally obtained that uh, name, he, he wasn't as large as he is now. He's since grown into uh, his name. He was adopted from us uh, about a year ago as a kitten. And uh, he came in with uh, two litter mates. Um, all of them were adopted out. And Shamu came back uh, mid-March when his owner, um, who was a, a veteran went into a uh, residential uh, PTSD program. So um, because he was unable to uh, care for Shamu, he brought him back here to us so that we could um, not only provide care for him in the meantime, but to, to rehome him so that he has a permanent place. Um, Shamu is color coded purple because he can be a little opinionated about things. Um, he can also be a little fearful, fearful of some, some loud noises. Um, the toy seemed to, to you know, most cats engage. He seemed to be a little fearful of, of the noises that the toys were making, um, but he is still very much a young cat who loves to play. Um, he tries to play with all of the neighboring cats. He sticks his paws out of the cages, and um, right now he and Manfield are kind of, um, you know, um, he has the top bunk and Manfield has the bottom bunk, if you will, and they, they play with each other like that. So um, he would likely do very well with an, another cat to keep him company. Um, he is, uh, as I mentioned, a little bit shy, but he is used to, to being with other cats. He's playful, friendly. Um, you know, all the cats on the show today would probably just do best with uh, cat savvy owners who can understand their body language and know when, okay, now it's time to leave the cat alone, let them have um, a little peace and quiet off to themselves. But they are all good mixes. You know, they're all very playful in their own ways. They will cuddle with you in their own ways. They like to be petted. You know, you just have to, to read each cat. Some cats love to be picked up. Others prefer not to. Some will sit on your lap, but only if they get to come and make that decision. So it's all about taking the time to get to know your animals and um, being um, comfortable with, with what they ultimately show you. Um, the shelter is stressful, so they're not always 100% themselves in this environment. If you're interested in Shamu, you can visit him here at Animal Control. Um, we are again located at 1832 Rosemont Avenue. If cats aren't your thing, you're more of a dog person, um, stay tuned after the break and we'll introduce you to a few adoptable cats, uh, excuse me, a few adoptable dogs uh, and one of our uh, longtime rabbit residents. The Frederick County Sheriff's Office now offers fingerprinting services three days per week, from Tuesday through Thursday. Our goal is to make it more convenient for citizens to have fingerprints taken for employment, licenses, permits, and other important issues like adoption and child care services. The Sheriff's Office will continue to accept credit and debit cards, checks, and money orders as payment for fingerprint fees. Cash is not accepted. For more information, contact the Fingerprint Information Line at 301-600-4058. Catoctin Creek Nature Center is excited to offer field trips year-round for public, private, and homeschooled students from pre-K through high school. A hands-on experience will allow students to discover and explore the wildlife in the Piedmont region of Maryland. Topics will include Catoctin Creek critters, investigating insects, and seasons of change. Having fun, exploring, and educating are the components that make Catoctin Creek Nature Center such an excellent resource for outdoor education. For more information or to schedule a field trip, please call our main office at 301-600-2936 or visit us on the web at www.recreator.com. The Frederick Green Homes Challenge is now online. Visit frederickgreenchallenge.org to sign up for a free account and start saving energy, saving money, and reducing your environmental impact. Learn about actions you can take from small to big, like upgrading your light bulbs, using water-saving devices, or installing a renewable energy system. Add actions to your to-do list, earn points for completing actions, and track your savings, all online. You can even post your story and learn from the experience of others. To get started, visit frederickgreenchallenge.org and click Take the Challenge. 
Many volunteer opportunities are available on Frederick County boards and commissions. Whether the Commission on Aging, Human Relations Commission, the Solid Waste Advisory Committee, Workforce Development Board, or many others, those desiring to serve must be residents and registered voters of Frederick County. For more information, contact Joyce Grisnickel at 301-600-1102 or by email at fcgboards at frederickcountymd.gov. Welcome back. Our first uh, canine guest is Bentley, and he is one of the small dogs that's available for adoption right now. We often have people coming in and looking for smaller breeds. Um, we do take two applications for all of our adult dogs, um, and then up to four for our puppies, and we choose the best fit for the dog. So right now, Bentley has one application, but um, we will accept up to two, and then again, choose the, the best fit for him. He came to us as a stray, um, so we're not exactly sure um, you know what his likes and dislikes are as we are with all strays we're learning about them as their uh, stay progresses what um, most people are going to say well what what is Bentley um, he's a dog obviously but breed um, we just have him down as a terrier mix because we're not exactly sure but he definitely has all those terrier tendencies um, he's white and tan he came to us already uh, neutered so that's a good thing um, we behavior assess all of our dogs, so in his behavior assessment, that's where you're going to get most of your information about Bentley. Um, he keeps his, uh, he uses the outside runner as separate kennel to go um, to the bathroom, but he's not keeping his kennel totally clean. Um, so a little extra help with house training would be necessary. He's friendly when you approach him. He's excited. Um, he is been, he has been having some not great re reactions. Excuse me with other dogs. So when um, he's in the kennel and they walk by him, he um, barks and growls. Um, when he's walking through, he's, he apparently seems to be more defensive, um, but he, again, he'll bark and growl and then he retreats. So something to keep in mind if you do have an existing dog in your home. Um, he reluctantly gives up objects, um, not really able to test him for food aggression. He leans in and enjoys touch. As you can see, he's perfectly content sitting up there in the chair with, with Tammy. Um, it says, um, the, the notes from our staff say, I am a nice but opinionated boy. I don't like to be restrained, but I like cuddling. Um, so um, that's kind of right now what we know about Bentley. Um, and we will provide all the information that we have about any animal to uh, any potential adopters. And uh, if you are interested in uh, making this sweet but opinionated uh, boy part of your family, you can visit him here at, at Animal Control. Our visiting hours are going to be Monday, Tuesday, and Friday from 10 to 5, Wednesday and Thursday from 12 to 8, and Saturday from 10 to 4. Our next guest is Jack, and Jack is a one-year-old beagle mix. He is uh, not your traditional tricolor. He is sable in color. Um, he, too, is one of our, our dogs that has currently one application, but, again, we take two for our adult dogs. Um, even if, uh, you know, you see an animal that you're interested in, follow up and make sure it actually leaves the building. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes uh, adoptions fall off. Animals maybe get full on applications, we're not taking anymore, one falls off for whatever reason. Sometimes animals are even scheduled for adoption and the owners call and change their minds, uh, the, or those adopters, excuse me, call and change their minds. So if you're really interested in an animal, follow up and uh, see see it through until the end to make sure that they actually get adopted and, and leave our facility. Um, Jack is another animal that came to us as a stray, so all the information that we have about him will be in his behavior assessment. Those assessments are done when the animals are processed and put on the adoption floor, so for some animals they can change over time if they're here for an extended period. Um, Jack uh, does need some work on his house training, 
He's friendly and excited. He, um, unlike Bentley, has favorable reactions to other dogs. Um, he is so excited that he can be hard to leash up sometimes. Um, he is difficult to walk because he pulls, but because he's a smaller dog at uh, only uh, 25 pounds, he's much more manageable, but he does need to learn how to walk properly on a leash. Um, he had no issues with food aggression, wasn't really interested in, in the toys they were providing, so they couldn't test him for object guarding. Um, but he also uh, loves to be petted and, and, and touched. He spent some time up with Tammy on uh, the chair as well. Um, so overall, he's he's a great dog, but he is still a young dog who will need um, proper training to ensure that he's a, a good uh, canine citizen as he's moving forward uh, throughout his life. If you're interested in Jack, um, but maybe you want to make sure that he's not adopted before you make the trip into the shelter, you can call us and ask for more information about his status. Our phone number here at the shelter is 301-600-1546. Uh, we recently have had a ton of puppies come in, which is quite unusual actually um, for us. Um, we had some uh, much smaller puppies and they've all since been adopted. And right now we have um, two eight month old sisters. They are boxer mixes and we're gonna introduce you to both of them, but the first one here is Harley and she has a uh, more of, uh, um, she has the, the black mask on. Um, she and her sister were brought to us um, around April 11th because uh, their owner was having some health issues and some financial hardships. So um, unable to take care of them, he brought them to us so that we could find them a new home. Um, these dogs do better apart, so that's why we're showcasing them separately. Um, they are also not caged or housed to, together in the same kennel um, because they, um, like, like young sisters, they can get into a, a little bit of trouble with one another, right? Right, Harley? You guys can be a little naughty. Um, so Harley is uh, listed as uh, one of the, the shire of the, of the two. Um, she is color-coded green, which means she's a little bit more energetic, not as uh, relaxed. Um, we have done behavior assessments for both of them. So um, what our staff found uh, for Harley is that she does keep her kennel fairly clean. But as a puppy, you should keep in mind she's a puppy and maybe need a little extra assistance with house training. She's friendly and excited. She reacts favorably to some dogs by play bowing, getting excited. Other dogs uh, she reacts negatively to. Um, she's easy to obtain. She's a little nervous and lags behind her handler when walking, and she also pulls. Um, she kind of bounces back and forth. Um, and all of these things were done before she uh, had the opportunity to go to a puppy camp. So. Um, you know, these things may be a little bit different now. Um, she's no issues with food aggression. They were unable to test her for object guarding. She likes to be petted. Um, and I mentioned earlier that she has gone to puppy camp. So we sent uh, several of our dogs, uh, including um, Harley and Callie and Remington and Chewy to a puppy camp where they've uh, learned some basic manners and spent some time um, socializing with other dogs. So. Uh, if you were to adopt any of the dogs that participated in that camp, you would get some uh, information about um, how they were trained so that you can continue to work on those items with the dogs and uh, also get a, a free training class with that. If you're interested in Harley, you can visit her here at 1832 Rosemont Avenue. Our last dog for today is going to be Callie. She is, uh, of course, Harley's sister. You can definitely see the resemblance. She too is uh, approximately eight months old. Um, she um, also had the opportunity to go to that puppy camp. So the behavior assessment that I'm gonna be going through on the show today may not be completely accurate now that she's had some, uh, a whole week's worth of training um, to, to, to teach her some, some better manners and things like that. Um, Callie is definitely, in my opinion, the more outgoing of, of the two boxer puppies. She's definitely the one that's going to come right up to you. She's going to cuddle with you a little bit more. She's not nearly as shy, um, but she is um, also the one that can have a little bit more um, sass with other dogs as well. So things to, to keep in mind. Um, if you're interested in, in them, I would consider um, you know, visiting with both of them and seeing which is really going to be the best fit for your family. Um, she too is good about keeping her kennel clean. Um, she can be a, uh, mostly friendly and excited, but a little cautious. Um, she plays bows. Um, 
and can have positive reactions with dogs, but she too can have some barking and negative reactions. Um, she is easy to obtain, uh, initially a little shy, but definitely right now pretty easily um, able to get her out from her kennel. Um, again, she didn't have any uh, experience you know, with leash walking. Now she walks much better. Um, we walk both of these dogs generally on a harness, which um, when they come back from camp, they kind of know that it means that it's time to do work. So they're a little bit better behaved, in my opinion. Um, when they are on their harnesses, but also it keeps them from pulling and possibly injuring their necks. Um, no issues with food aggression, loves to be petted. Um, she's a very sweet girl who loves hugs and she's definitely showcased that today. She gave everybody here so some hugs before we started um, filming her segment. Um, as I mentioned, uh, she uh, and her sister both went to puppy camp. So um, their packets are gonna include things like um, how to continue their training, um, that uh, free training class Class. I believe it's a seven week class. So um, definitely something that you want to take advantage of. It's very important to properly train dogs when they're young, like Callie is, um, so that they don't grow up to um, be, you know, larger and, and animals that, you know, are harder to control. So um, it's important for not only, you know, their, their behavior and overall safety, but it gives them mental stimulation, it gives them physical stimulation, and it can boost their confidence. If you are interested in any of the dogs that you've seen on, on the show today, the only way that you can move forward with making them part of your family is to visit them here at the shelter. Our address is 1832 Rosemont Avenue. If you wanted to check the status of any of those animals, you can always call at 301-600-1546. The last guest that we have for you today is one of the many adoptable rabbits on our adoption floor. This is Pinky, and Pinky is about four months old now. She came in in the beginning of February with uh, two other, or excuse me, three other uh, siblings. When we first came, when they first came in, we thought that they were all girls. Uh, young rabbits can be hard to sex. Um, it turns out that there were two boys and two girls. Um, three of them um, were uh, like much like Pinky, as you see, the albino rabbits with the kind of reddish blue eyes. And then the third one, um, or the fourth one, excuse me, um, had uh, some spots and was a little bit different. He has since been adopted, but the three white rabbits are still remaining. So we have Pinky, who is here on the show today, her sister, Blinky, and of course, their brother, Inky. Um, all of the rabbits were named after the ghost in Pac-Man. That's how they got their names. Um, these rabbits have been basically living here for the majority of their lives. They came in when an owner's pet um, reproduced. They couldn't care for all the bunnies, so they brought them to us to be rehomed. Because of that, they have grown up being handled, and they are um, very used to being handled. They're very affectionate. They're very playful rabbits. They're great bunnies. Um, but unfortunately, um, because of their albino traits, some people are kind of freaked out, weirded out by them. And, and I think that's truly the reason why they, they haven't been adopted. Um, you know, there's nothing weird about uh, their eyes. It's because uh, the blood, there, there's no pigment there. So you can see the blood vessels and things like that under their eyes. So don't let that deter you. Um, because if you're looking for a rabbit, especially a... Um, you've never owned a rabbit as a pet before, uh, these three rabbits are going to be great first-time rabbits because they are already accustomed to being handled by people. And our staff will go over the proper care and maintenance for these guys. They do have special care needs. So if you're interested in a rabbit, we have three um, super sweet baby rabbits who are, are looking for forever homes. If you want to uh, visit with um, Pinky, Blinky, or Inky, um, you can uh, visit us at 1832 Rosemont Avenue. We are open to the public six days a week, Monday through Saturday. We want to thank you for tuning in and uh, watching Pet Pals today, getting uh, to know some of our adoptable pets. There are always many more than what we have time to showcase here, so um, please stop in and, and visit and meet all of our adoptable pets.